The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 12th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I would love to hear from you at 877-927-664. But if you can't call in, you've got a question, well, we've got you covered there too. You can send me an email. You send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now send that off early. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of green out there, whether it's the U.S. indices, the sectors in the S&P 500, nearly everything. If we take a look at the Dow, it's up 271. The S&P 42, the Russell is up 26. The NASDAQ 100, 189. The semi's up 56 points. The lowest percentage is basically about one or really three tenths. So it would be the trannies. They're up three tenths of a percent, 52 points. Gold is up a little over 1%. Silver's up nearly 4%. That's 23 bucks and 88 cents, respectively. Lights we crude trading up a dollar. 75.84. Today will complete a TD9 count top. That says no today's high. If we start closing trade above that tomorrow, well, that would be a strong upward momentum move for light sweet crude. Natural gas up eight pennies and a 30 treasury up one point, printing out at 125.12. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside is Domino's Pizza, 35 bucks, 10%. Asmill Holdings, 23 bucks, over 3%. Mercado Libre, nearly 2% or nearly 20 bucks. United Rentals, almost 13 bucks. And BlackRock, $12 and change, about one and seven tenths percent. The shakers to the downside is Granger WW. It's trading down uh, 14 points. That's about nearly 2% trade out at 780. We take a look at Elevance Health. That's down 14 bucks or 3%. 4% for Palo Alto Networks, a $10 move. Cigna Group down 3% or 9 bucks. And the Silk Road Medical is off 27%. That's a stinker. That's down uh, 8 buckaroonies. We've got a caller on the line. Let's go out and speak with Garo. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm very good. How about you, sir? Very, very, doing very well. Thanks so much for asking. MDB is the ticker symbol that you're calling about. Uh, tell us how I can best be of service to you. Yes, sir. MDB, um, uh, I'm in short now. I've been shorting this for five days. Uh, if, and uh, if you look at the daily chart, uh, I use the SAR parabolic dots. And you'll see that is there are five dots at the top of it. So when yes. the daily uh, the, the candle goes below that, uh, the, those dots, that it shows that the trend is changing and it's going into short. Got it. Uh, the daily chart, uh, but this is, it is at a 392 and change. It's just holding the five day. Uh, it's right intercepting with uh, 21 day. And uh, as soon as that five day crosses 21 down and the candle goes below the five day, then the, sh the real short starts. And um, I, I, I needed your idea that you think this is going to happen. And if it goes down, you think it will go down to $333, which is that uh, 50 day moving average. Got it. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, that, that is number one. Uh, n number two, the weekly is a very overbought. Is very promising, but it's very, very overbought. 
uh, and the candle is below its five-day moving average. That's not a good sign. Okay. Uh, the monthly, it is very good, promising, but the candle is way away from the five-day moving average. So either uh, the candle has to stay here and hover at this price until the five-day reaches and intercepts with the candle, or the price has to go down and hit that $320 level in that area. So from there on, it will be uh, 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 acknowledged that which way is going to go. So okay, okay. my question from you, sir, is that you think this will go towards on a daily chart, will go below that of a 21 day moving average towards the 50 day 333 or uh, this is the end of it? Because the MACD is in a very bad shape. It's been crossed a few days ago when the MACD crosses over on a daily chart, uh, which, was, uh, which was done when? Uh, on uh, uh, on, on the, the few days ago, five, six days ago. Sure. Uh, the, the steel, is the, uh, the steel is on the downside. Uh, so uh, what is your idea, sir? So I think so you, you are right here. And I do have both the daily and the weekly charts up on the screen so that people can follow along with you. Our numbers, I know that from time to time on our charting systems, for some reason, they offer a little bit different information. So for, as an example, on my weekly chart right now, I show price trading out at 392 uh, and change out there. And I show the five-day uh, simple moving average at 392. So it's already made that intersection at this at this point in time. But uh, that's what I show on my system. So I just need to make sure I, 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 I stated that because we've got folks that are looking in and you were talking about waiting for price to get up to that level and on my system for the five-day simple moving average i've got it there right now not a big deal but to answer your specific question i do see that it has lost its momentum and everything that you described uh, also which, which so when i look at my uh, charts out here i see that it has also lost momentum we could take a look at that momentarily what i don't see is a top what I do see right now is a consolidation with inside its daily profile. And that range uh, runs from 379.80 at support to the resistance zone. And there, it's a zone because the center of this profile is closer to the top than it is to the bottom. So the sell zone is 405.68 to 418.70. Will it get down and bust through that profile level? So. The only thing I've got to go on right now to take a look as as an example, when price was down there on July 1st, again, we're, you know, holiday time period. So sometimes these volume metrics that we look at, we've got to um, consider when that took place, what was going on. But on July 1st out there, the volume was 1.4 million shares. It's moving lower today through the first uh, two hours of trading. We've done about 400,000 shares. So 400,000 would equate to maybe one point. 2 million or so at day's end. So what price is doing right now, or appears to be doing, is pulling back with lighter volume. That's not exactly the sign you want to see as price two days ago, which price yes, uh, two days ago on the 10th, uh, pulled back and tested that support level at the bottom of that profile, 379.80 out there. On the daily time frame, uh, so this is kind of interesting, on the daily time frame now, and maybe and when we get back to this break, you can answer this question for viewers and myself as well, the dots now are on the downside, not on the top side out there for MDB. At least that's what I've got on my system. So maybe you can answer that question for me, why you would still absolutely consider the short position here. Again, I think this is communicating to you and I more of a consolidation than a true out short. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back to speak with Garo and uh, stick with us. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Garo in California, an extraordinary trader. We're taking a look at ticker symbol MDB. Garo uses the 5, the 21, 50-day uh, uh, simple moving averages along with the parabolic, parabolic SAR. Now, I've got the parabolic SAR dots on my system out here. And the question before we went to break that I asked to Garo, because he took a short position based upon the uh, parabolic SAR dots. And really, it looks like it might have been on July 7th. July 6th or July 7th is when he started shorting uh, this stock. And uh, now we've got uh, parabolic SAR dots that are below price out here. And so my question was, um, why would you still stick with the short? Isn't this more of a message of a consolidation than a, you know, than a significant top out there? Or so, so that's, that's basically my question to you. And, and my charts are completely different. Than I see your charts. Mm, okay. But the reading and the formation of your chart is completely the opposite of mine. Wow. And I, I'm, I'm really amazed that how the dots are below in your chart and my charts are showing the dots are up from 6th of July. That's where wow. the short started. Um, it, really, it really amazes me that I'm, I'm che I checked with two different charting systems, one with Schwab and the other okay. one with TC2000. Both of them, they are showing five dots at the top of it on a daily chart hmm. on, in the three months or six months uh, daily basis. And uh, um, no, if that is the case, but we cannot we cannot talk about this at no, all. That, it, it, yeah, that's it, yeah, that's yeah. that's interesting. So one of our denners, uh, Dan, inside the Tigers Den, says his charts are, are are matching yours as well. Can I ask you? Um, you know, I'm not that familiar with the the system, and you probably can answer this real quickly. The inputs that I have on my system, it's got a start, an increment, and a max. I don't know if that makes sense to you. And each of mine are set at either 0 0.02, 0 0.02, and then 0 0.2. Would those be the same settings that you're using? Would you know if those are the same settings or not? It's the same variables, yes, sir. Same wow. thing, yeah. Yeah, wow. uh, point zero 0.02 and point 0.2, absolutely, it's the same variable. Mm. But okay. how your, yeah. 
Yeah, yes, uh, yeah so I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, uh, I won't do it right now because I want to take up the time to do that, but I will try yeah. looking at that, uh, at this on my, uh, do me do me a favor, well, yeah, send me an email whenever you get a chance, but I will try looking at that on my other chart system when I get off the air and also make a call over to eSignal because it what doesn't make sense that it's not lining up. But what it does do is, it you know, it posed that question to me when I saw it, and when I had originally come up with the idea of a consolidation was because as I look at this daily time frame chart what's missing for me here is a topping pattern and so what I see is just a consolidation with inside the profile levels especially knowing that two days ago price tested and rejected the bottom of that profile at 379.65 uh, that doesn't mean that it can't be a short it just doesn't have the topping pattern that I'm looking for I would say you were asking can price get down to 330 obviously it can't do anything that it wants yes. I would yes. say price is yes. going to need to close below 365.11 at 365 this does have a TD9 count pattern it's just not a topping pattern because the high came in on bar number seven but that still sets up where the breakout took place and the most recent breakout at mdb was 365.11 so if 379.65 fails i would watch 365.11 if 365.11 fails i would watch 357.05 357.05 is the bottom of a new weekly profile that has formed this week those would be your levels of support and i apologize that my uh, my uh, uh, e-signal system is not even close to matching yours mm -hmm. Um, no, we'll no, see. no, it's okay, Steve. It's okay. Because on my other charting system, the candle, it is below the regression line with a 30-day okay. moving average and below Hull moving average, H-U-L-L -L sure. moving average with sure. a 50-day moving average. Both of them, the candles are below that. When the candle goes below regression line and Hull moving, that is the end of it, that, that the short starts from there. Uh, yeah. But uh, um, the way that if we have a conflict of um, uh, 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 charging system, I don't want to sure. take your time more than I appreciate your time and listening to me. Uh, it has uh, I appreciate that, sir. But uh, I'll, well, call, I appreciate uh, call. I'll call tomorrow or day after tomorrow and see if, the, if okay. we can have some resolution on that. Perfect. All right. That sounds great. Hey, Carol, thanks so much for the call and all the explanations. Uh, that's great. And I'll look forward to uh, speaking with you again soon. You bet. That was Garo in California. Uh, let's go on to, uh, we've got a couple of requests that have come in. So let me get to uh, those here before time uh, elapses. And the first one came in from Hector and Patty. And they're taking a look at ticker symbol IWO. And what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to change screens momentarily because they're asking about the A to B equals CD pattern. NWS had confirmed an A to B equals CD to the upside. Can you please confirm and give us a target for the possible D points out there? So first on the daily time frame. The other thing that I'll point out to you is yesterday price negated a TD9 count top. So we got another pattern here or a pattern that was negated yesterday. The weekly chart, though, you are in bar number eight of a TD9 count. That says you could see an intermediate term top that forms between this week and two weeks out. So now I'll switch back to the black background charts. We'll go ahead and populate those and we'll take a look at the eight B equals CD patterns. We'll look at them for the daily, weekly, monthly, whatever time frames that uh, they're available for. So now let's get over to uh, put in IWO, I believe that is one of the Russell indexes. Yeah, that's Russell 2000 growth. So oh, that's interesting. So really, I also had drawn in here originally a consolidation pattern, but it looks more like it could be, well, we'll just leave that at this stage here. So what the weekly chart though is telling us, so uh, Hector and Patty, is it's not showing us an A to B equals CD to upside, at least not just yet. In order to do that, I would say that price needs to close above the high from the week of August 15, 2022, and that number is 248.98. So I put that number on your pad of paper. With regard to the daily, the daily that you guys are looking at, and then we'll pull this chart back, or I would think this is what you're looking at. Uh, the B point out here on the trading day of, um, let me just make sure I got this, the trading day of uh, June 14th, the C point being the low here on June 26th, and the A point would be all the way back down to the low that formed on March 24th. Now, that one-to-one -one price projection would get you up to 263.48. Because that was only a 0.382 retracement, it was really 36% retracement, odds would favor this would do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Now, what I'm doing here, Hector and Patty, is I'm giving you the numbers that you asked. I'm not at all at this stage here saying that's where price is going to go. And the reason I'm not saying that is because of that weekly chart out there. And we really want to see that swing point get taken out. Now, the swing point that we referred to on a weekly basis had done volume of 2.5 million shares. We're now about 
almost halfway through the trading week. We're not, but it's 812,000 shares. So this is moving into that swing point with light volume out there. Now, I didn't have any kind of a topping signal or anything on the daily time frame. We did on the weekly, though, right? We had bar number eight of a TD nine count. So even though we've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside on the daily time frame out here, that small A to B equals CD pattern, it's really the larger one. Right? It's the large one. So if we take a look at the larger one now, the A point out here starts all the way back on the chart. So once we expanded out the chart, June 16th is our A point. Uh, that's why it's helpful to also do the weekly. Because if it's on the weekly, it's also on the daily. There might be other intraday daily type signals out there. The B point being the trading day of August 15th. And the C point looks like it might have been either October 13th or... Uh, September 26th. I'll just use the October 13th at this stage here. Now that swing point, daily swing point, had volume of 743,000 shares. You're only at 1.2 right now. So Hector and Patty, I don't know about this A to B equals CD stuff that you're looking at based upon yesterday's. Pull the chart back a little bit further. Take a look at what I'm looking at here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's go on to our next question. This one coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. Question reads like this. Good morning, Steve. I'm long SBSW. That is, um, so, what is that still? SBSW. SBSW. Sidebane Stillwater, something like that. 
Um, Cy Bane Stillwater. Yeah, okay, great. So I'm long at SBSW. The six-hour level seemed to be at my point that, uh, yeah, October, you've got the October 750 calls, 20 cents piece. What do you see as upside potential as well as downside support? If you have a chance to look at gold, uh, there is a correlation with uh, this stock at Wonderful Wednesday. You do the same. So if we take a look at SBSW, you've got an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. Um, you got that nice gap today. You've got some good volume behind this move. Today's volume so far, about 2.4 million shares. An example, yesterday did 4.4. So you're well ahead of that. The next price target to the upside is $7.16. Short of a bearish reversal candle, which would confirm a Gartley sell pattern, that is where price should target, 716. Price is above the weekly oscillator and change line, which is at 669. So that's also a bullish outcome. You asked about uh, downside support. Price closed above the top of its bearish structure daily profile yesterday, Brent. It's traded above that today. So our two-day rule has worked out here. On a retracement, should you get a retracement, the retracement should find support at $6.30. It could be $6.39, but $6.30 should be the ultimate support if a move lower in SBSW is nothing more than a counter trend move out there. So that's what I see as your upside potential above 716. I'd be looking at the 819 level that happens to be the current bottom of the uh, weekly profile out there. And yeah, uh, so you got nice looking patterns on the daily and weekly for sure. The monthly, not so much just yet, but the daily and weekly are looking very good. So Brent, I hope that that helps you out and as always thanks so much for taking the time to write in much appreciated we've got a couple questions inside the tiger's den so let's get to those uh first one coming in from who asked about this was this coda who asked about this i apologize i think it was uh, but doesn't matter the question i believe the question was in the spy is there a td sequential cell signal there was something about a 13, so I assume that that's what you were referring to, a Coda, if that was you, and the answer is no. I do not have that. I do not have that uh, TD sequential signal that is on my uh, system out here for the spies. All that I see on the spy is that it's up above prior swing points. There's no topping uh, signal on the daily time frame. The weekly is going to complete bar number nine of a TD nine count. So you can see that. And that says, so, so from an intermediate term standpoint, Let's not get over our skis out here. We could see a top that forms between uh, this week and next week out there. The weekly, the monthly chart looks very good for the spies and suggests that it wants to get up to the 468.20 uh, level out there. So I do not have that 13 count that you're looking at. And I know that it works. For example, I'll put up the GDX charts here. I'll eventually get to those uh, charts. And if we take a look at the GDX chart out here, and I don't even know that uh, John, probably John in the Tiger's Den, Z, you probably knew that. But if you didn't know that, uh, we got a TD sequential signal on the trading day of July 6th, right? And then you got to get a, a close uh, four, uh, a close above the close four bars earlier. Well, I know we've got that today out there. So I, I don't know if John uh, uh, knew that uh, on the. Uh, so I do know that, and this has both a, a TD sequential and TD combo count out there so on my charts what i've done is i've i re i reconfigured that tool it's not in every chart because there's a lot of calculations going on but on some of the charts certain charts that i have it'll populate and show us that uh, 13 because i don't want to be caught off guard uh, like I was when uh, John was able to point that out uh, to us. So in reviewing a chart. So I don't see that inside the uh, spy chart. If that was not the question you were asking about, uh, Coda, please let me know and I'll be happy to uh, get specifically to your request out there. Let's go to the next question that came in. That is uh, from um, Seven inside the Tiger's Den. And the ticker symbol here is M-U-L-N. And M-U-L-N is Mullen Automotive. What a, a stinker this thing has been and maybe this was I, I don't know if this was a what this was I mean at some point in time this was trading out at uh, 21 bucks so it was trading out at uh, twenty dollars and sixty four cents today it's at 15 cents out there um, so I, I don't know if there is if there was uh, if this was a reverse I don't know what this was but you're asking what is this doing man this is uh, I, I, oof. oof yeah I don't like this what the heck happened to my charting system that's very weird. Got some weird things going on today. Maybe that was part of girls, uh, the issue I was having with girls' charts. So on this chart here, uh, what I've got is, uh, what do we have? Not much of anything. Um, 
just looking on the weekly basis, 17 cents was the close. This close was 11. I've got nothing here. I've got nothing. Uh, so let me just switch back to the black background chart seven. I'll give you the data that I can. Um, I, you know, do I have a, if, you're, if you're asking, do I have a bottoming pattern or something like that? The answer is I don't. Um, and I, I don't really know what you would do with this uh, stock here. I guess at 15 cents, you can buy it as uh, if you believe in this company, you buy it as a uh, as an option trade and you take one percent or whatever amount of capital you want to risk. And uh, that's how many shares you buy and you stick it in your drawer out there. But I don't even have reasons to suggest that you would do something like that. Reasons. What would be a reason, Stevie? A high volume high could be one of those reasons. And we just don't have that. So prices trade above the top of the daily profile. The top of that daily profile is 11 pennies out there. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 14 cents and the bottom is 11. But other than that, there's really not a whole lot of information that I can provide to you on Mullen. You can see it, but the second chart here is still the SBSW, and that is really wild, M-U-L-N. So there's something, huh, yeah, it worked that time. In any event, uh, that's all that I can uh, provide to you. I hope that that helps, and uh, thanks so much uh, for taking the time to write, and hopefully next time it gets a little bit better. So John had written in, I pulled up those charts for the uh, GDX out there, and um, and we showed we showed that uh, TD9, uh, the uh, sequential uh, signal that had formed out there. And you're getting, you're certainly getting confirmation today. You might've got that yesterday or even the day before. But the question was, could I discuss the GDX now it relates to this gold rally out here? So let me do this. Um, let me get uh, to this chart. This is pull up the uh, GDX charts. So first, folks, uh, I, I don't have the charts that I can show you right now, but you can do this work yourself. Go back to a time period where gold formed any kind of significant uh, uh, bottom out there and uh, and match that with the date on the uh, GDX and match that to identify rates of change. So figure out you know, how many how many days from the bottom to the top there were. Put that in as your rate of change time period so you know that during that top and bottom, just what that rate of change was for the GDX. And when you compare that to the rate of change for gold, you are likely going to find that the GDX outperformed the rally in gold by 3, 4, 5, 10 to 1, 15 to 1 sometimes out there. So typically when we get a gold rally, it is the mining stocks that will outperform what gold does. Typically. Doesn't mean always. It means typically. So that's the first thing I would be looking for. One of the things I'd be looking for, and then I'm going to go back to and, and start to monitor, John, is just that now on a short-term basis. So you know that the bottom that was put, we know that the GDX put in a nice bottom on June 29th out there. So I'll probably use that date and start paying attention to the rates of change of both gold and the GDX out there. And one of the reasons that I want to do that was because of this chart that I pulled up uh, late this morning. I wasn't real happy to see this. And what am I seeing? I'm seeing gold moving lower in pounds and yen and euros this month. Steve Rhodes, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, stock charts here for gold that you're taking a look at. These are monthly stock charts that you're looking at uh, gold. Oh, one, one thing I do want to point uh, say here, Garo, if you're still listening in, I did pull up a, a MDB chart on my um, Ninja Trader system. It's hard to see right now. It's got the the, uh, the dots, the parabolic star dots are, are in gold. And here they are showing up uh, top out there. So one of the first things that, so this is matching what uh, Dan has, this is matching what you have. And obviously I've got an issue with my e-signal system. I'll try to get that resolved uh, today. Uh, but tomorrow when you call back in, we continue, you know, so at least I've got uh, one system that uh, is uh, is generating the same information that you are. We can retake a look at it, or I'll even take a look at that myself tomorrow with you, or, or without you, either with or without you uh, tomorrow on the uh, show out there. So I just want to to, uh, to to let you know about that. Okay, so here I'm taking a look at the charts for gold. Now this is a monthly time frame chart for gold, and really what John's question was about was yesterday was a, the question was what do I think is probably the biggest opportunity. Um, I think it was a question something like that, and and I I gave the answer was gold, and I, I went through the reasons why, out there. Now, in order for gold to really sustain a rally, in order for any significant instrument to really sustain a rally, it needs to be moving higher in all major currencies. Well, certainly something like gold or silver or crude oil it needs to be rallying in all major currencies. Right now, on a monthly basis, you can see we do have gold trading higher in dollars. But it is not trading higher in dollars, in euros, in yen, in pounds. So, John, this gives me just a bit of pause out there and is another reason for me to want to be able to track what the rate of change is on a daily basis between gold, silver, and the GDX. As long as that rate of change in the GDX remains above the rate of change for gold and silver, then I think we're on pretty decent footings. But um, and I'm going to have to go back and do some uh, work on uh, gold priced in euros, pounds and yen and try to figure out what they're doing with regard to support and so on and so forth. So I hope that that helped you out with regard to that question. If not, you know, I'll go ahead and write back and I'll try to uh, provide you with the information that you're looking at. Um, inside the Tiger's Den, Dan wanted to take a look at the profile levels for ticker symbol SWIM and swim. They're, they're my favorite shoes out there. Swim shoes, that is, and uh, make a, a really good product. But in any event, with regard to swim, you specifically were asking for profile levels. Well, price is above the top of the daily profile. That's at 344. You don't need the bottom or the center. On a weekly basis, the profile levels that we have, price is going to target the top of its weekly profile, Dan. That's at 403. We're at about 398. Let me just see if we're actually at that price. Uh, sometimes I have a little bit of a delay out here. SWIM. Let me make sure that we're also in the right spot. We're not in the right spot. Okay, so this will be helpful if we do that. That was probably Mr. Bill. Thank you. So let me get over here. So now we're at the uh, stock charts for SWIM. And uh, 
what was the B to C before we complete the ABC chart, Steve? Uh, Dan, are you talking about um, swim? Uh, disregard. Okay. All right. So with regard to – with oh, no, you weren't. Uh, well, let me know what it was. I don't have any other questions in, uh, in the uh, queue here. So, uh, you know, if you get, you know just, just, just let me know what you want, and I'm happy to uh, go take a look at it. But with, with regard to swim itself, uh, the last bottom that formed out here was a TD9 count bottom. It was back on June 22nd. We have a weekly TD9 count bottom on April the 28th out there. So all that looks good. And then on a monthly base, looks like we're going to get a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. So that's a beautiful thing. Now, what price is doing right now, Dan, on a daily basis, moving into a swing point with light volume was ES. Okay, I'll, I'll get back. I'll show you that because we I wanted to do that anyways. So uh, that's uh, the May 26 uh, swing point is what it's trading into. That had 378,000. I'm sorry. Did I say lighter volume? It's moving into it with volume. 375,000. That says that that high should at least get tagged. That high is $4.03. $4.03 matches up with the uh, top of the weekly profile. So therefore, if price is able to close above the top of the weekly profile, well, you should expect or anticipate as a move up to its TD9 count breakdown level, and that's at $4.35. That's really everything that I see here with regard to SWIM. Um, uh, if there's anything else that you need, uh, please uh, let me know. So what Dan was asking about was the A to B equals CD pattern for the ES Mini. And I don't really think I ever got to that. So, uh, so and I did want to get to that. So let's do, let's try to figure out, well, did, did I do this here? Let me just uh, change windows. I don't. I didn't get to it because I went right into a call with Garo. That's what it was. So let's look at this this set of charts here. So let's take a look at the equity markets. So what do we know about the equity markets? So on a daily basis, we know that the ES Mini has rose momentum top with the resistance levels at 44.98. We're at 45.04 right now. If price closes above 44.98, we're going to go figure out where price is going to head to. But that's the first thing. If price doesn't close above 44.98, the A to B equals CD pad that we're going to go take a look at on a weekly basis right now wouldn't mean anything. It'll mean something if we get a close above 44.98. In the case of the NQ out there, the number to be watching is 15.475.50. Now, ideally, what you would get is you would get both of these that negate their sell patterns out there, which would go right along, where's that come from? Which would go right along with uh, the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000, a close today above 1929.10, is going to negate its sell signal. That's got a TD9 count and a sell the D point pattern, and that'll generate Generate an A to B equals CD with a one-to-one -one price objective of 2030. Now, in the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it would need to take out 35,768. That's a Rhodes momentum indicator top from back on uh, December the uh, 13th of 2022 out there. Um, so uh, we're away, quite a ways from that. Now, with regard to larger A to B equals CD patterns, here is the ES Mini on a weekly basis. And that says that price should go target 45,57. Well, we would agree with that if price takes out and close above 44.98. So that's how you put that together. On a weekly basis, the NASDAQ 100 is already at the 1 to 1.618 or very close to it, A to B equals CD. That's actually priced at 15.611 uh, on the NQ. Uh, but what we can also see here is prices run right into descending trend line. So that descending trend line is resistance on a daily basis. Remember, we still have that TD9 sequential sell signal. That is still valid and in effect as we speak right now at 1149 in the morning. If we look at the Dow, we can see that the Dow has also made it up to its descending trend line. So it's up to stiff resistance. And as good as the Russell looks, and it does, and I can't turn off these trend lines. I could adjust the tool, so to speak. But what you can see is the Russell 2000 is moving into a cluster of trend lines out there. So even though it looks like it is broken out, we take a look at that daily time frame chart, Stevie's gonna say, hey, not so fast. Definitely not so fast. And even if the ES Mini takes out uh, the 44.98 level, it may just be targeting that 45.57 area out there. So we'll have to take things one step at a time out there. But what we can see when we look at the larger term or the weekly charts out here, we can see how price inside the NQ, the Dow, the YM, the Russell 2000 are each hitting trend line resistance. That is not the same for the S&P 500. That is not the same 
for the ES Mini. Real quickly here before we go to break, as we take a look at uh, market breadth, here's the market breadth for the S&P 500. It's bullish for all time frames for the NASDAQ. It's bullish for all time frames. When I say all time frames, I'm referring to 60, 240, daily and weekly. But we've got the 30-minute charts for you as well. And on a 30-minute basis, let me see here. Let me just make sure, let me update this. The NASDAQ right now, the NASDAQ has short-term bear, 61 below, 18 above, and I believe inside the S&P 500, that is the same. So we come back to this break. Let's look at the 30-minute time frame charts for the ES and Q and try to figure out where they might be headed to. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, there are um, a couple of uh, emails requests that came in. I don't know why my system, I see one came in around 1130. I'm just getting it now. Uh, 1140, I'm just getting it now. I will get to those uh, requests uh, tomorrow. So I'll make sure um, uh, that I get to those requests tomorrow. One was on Roku, one is on HSY. So we'll do, we'll do that. Uh, Brent has a question uh, in his uh, email that he sent. He also asked about gold and silver. So Brent, Gold right now is trading above the uh, top of its daily profile, above the center of its new weekly profile. It should target 1995. And silver should make its way up to the uh, 2477 level. That's really the area that price needs to close above. To tell you and I, this is more than a counter trend move out there. So I want to make sure I answered those questions. Back to the 30 minute time frame charts now. Back to what we haven't gotten to it. Let's take a look at the 30 minute time frame charts simply because. So on the ES mini, I'm going to change panels here. 
on the ES mini or the S&P 500 actually was market breadth bullish. So that's the upper left-hand chart. Now, what price is doing right now is testing profile support. And if it does close below 4507, it could be telling us that it wants to go target 4480. It's market breadth bullish. It's just slightly by about four or five instruments. So it's kind of a coin toss. But watch 4480. That would be a key level of support on a further pullback. Inside the NQ, price right now is testing the bottom of its profile. I mean, truly testing it. The bottom of that profile is at 15374. Price closes below that. We could be looking to move back to 15,285. And on the Dow, it's holding support. It's testing 30-minute profile support. And on the uh, Russell 2000, it's well above. It's just sideways move. Russell's in a world of its own as we speak right now. Uh, so that's what's going on inside those 30-minute time frame charts. Nancy, want to take a quick peek, and that's all that we have time for. Apple, with regard to Apple out here, you know, all that we know is that Apple is consolidating with inside its bullish structure daily profile. Nancy, it really ought to be able to make its way up to 192.24 out there. Um, it hasn't. Why? I don't know. But let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart. What I can share with you, I still don't know why it topped where it did. Um, but what I do know is that price is trading below the bottom of its 30-minute profile right now. And that bottom is at 189.15. And if price closes below that uh, by 12 noon, we're likely going to see 188.39 on that. And know that this morning we had a nice, well, that was yesterday afternoon, a nice bottom at 186.60. You close below that, that says lower price. Folks, stay tuned for some great programming. I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday.